Oh, jeepers, there's coffee. coffee all oh, around. Around. Cream, please. These are, these are not cream. Black Did coffee? You? Cream and uh, I'll take a black coffee. Black coffee? One is fair. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Two more blacks? Thank you. Very I have coffee full of sugar and stuff. Now, does anyone have any coffee flavored brandy? <laughs> there is only brandy flavored coffee, sorry. And? Uh, well, let's, let's Alternately, does anyone have any double gum schnapps that I could pick up? What? You don't judge me, I judge you. <laughs> So, so other celebrities will Bailey's? Who's that? I can go get it. And she means unsure. I don't have, I'll swim. I'll swim for you. I don't have truck with anyone who does not carry Bailey's on their person. <laughs> their special Bailey's holster. That's terrifying. I'm all gonna watch the microphone. Let's, let's get started. So uh, let, me, uh, let me get a couple of quick announcements out. One. Please. Oh, and also, uh, apparently, some, uh, as, as it would seem, uh, celebrities will show up randomly. Apparently. So you, you can decide where they go. All right. A uh, couple of quick announcements. It, it, is, is Her Royal Highness here this morning? Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for your queen. Does she, do you wish to, to remain amongst your people? Oh, that's that's a good queen. Wow. You, you haven't abdicated now, have you? That was fun though. The whole world was going like this. <laughs> she was forced uh, to abdicate the throne to be with the man she loves. Because he is un he is because he is unacceptable. Because he is unacceptable to our society. <laughs> Why he's a divorcee and an American. Uh, just a, just a couple of quick things. Uh, a reminder, the, the uh, iPhone handbell choir concert is in the Northern Lights Disco. Is that at 2 o'clock, I believe? Yeah. 2 o'clock. They're doing one song. Uh, the after, uh, after dinner, we're having our, our informal gathering at the Seaview Bar slash pool area starting around 10 o'clock. We would love everyone to be there. That will also be the gathering of the Beardlows. Um, Big dinner show tonight where the servers dance and sing and strip and uh <laughs> Furman like I've been waiting. <laughs> and and everyone will applaud for Furman. Excuse me. Everyone will what Furman? <laughs> you just give me a censored. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I'm curious if I know what happens to me tonight. Uh, everyone should have received their disembarkation packet last night at some point. Make sure you go through that. There's a sheet of paper in there that pretty much explains everything for you and has your luggage tags and all of that. Or else you'll never get off the boat, ever. You, you'll all be, uh, as... You not stay on the boat. <laughs> you'll all be charged, uh, as, as was des described in numerous emails, your, everyone is charged $11 a day, a uh, gratuity that covers your, uh, your room stewards. Uh, there's also, I believe, a survey for your servers in the dining area. It is asked uh, that you fill those out because there are our servers. We, we had that whole one area, uh, uh, so we cover uh, a number of servers, and they're in a competition. I guess the different groups of servers are in competition with each other, and I believe the winning group receives $1 million <laughs> or something like that. So please do... Second prize instead of steak knives. <laughs> Third prize... <laughs> so they, they, they've asked, uh, please do fill those out. Uh, and if you have any other questions regarding uh, any other appropriate or inappropriate means of tipping, you can ask Neil Bauman, who, where did he go? He's right over there. Everyone say hi to Neil again. Yeah. You can either find Neil or call him in his cabin, 10017, and he is here to serve you. If you give him $20. <laughs> He will tell you how much to tip. Finally, uh, they have, uh, there's been a, an organization put together, the uh, Joko and They Might Be Giants Acoustic Sing Along will be happening today at, from 1 to 3 p.m. in the piano bar on deck two next to the casino. Um, apparently there will be no it's iPhone. Just another, another form of karaoke? Uh, it's, it's crypto karaoke. It's a group karaoke. Uh, 
apparently there will be no iPhone handbells there. Uh, uh, that's from one until three. Uh, they have asked, please bring guitars. Is, does anyone have a guitar and, and plans to be there? <laughs> they think they have one. That'd be yeah. awesome. Okay, and also any other instruments if you have them. Grab a pot or the lid to uh, to your room service and a very large spoon and something. But uh, yeah, please show up for the single one. Bag of pipes. One more. One, 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 one more announcement. Uh, some extra intrigue has been added at the last minute. There will be Vikings versus Unicorns, 11 p.m. Friday night. And that will be at the Sea View Deck, level 9. And I'm going to talk like this for the rest of the day. Yeah. Sorry, one more, one more announcement. One o'clock on Friday. One o'clock? Oh, one o'clock is Vikings versus Unicorns? No, no, Pirate Flux. Oh, Pirate Flux, one o'clock on Friday in, in, the, in the gaming room. Today is Friday. Well, we're addressing it by its formal name. What's happening? Do you want to run Pirate Flux no. karaoke happening in this year? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Sagal. Go ahead. Hold on. Mr. No, I'm sorry. Mr. Rees. Thanks, guys. The final pencil sharpening session, I'm going to do it on the Lido deck today at one of those side tables at uh, 2.30. From a cot. <laughs> Thank you. Either there or the infirmary. We'll see. Are you auditioning uh, for a weekend at Bernie's three? <laughs> and Bernie's. And there's somebody in the audience who would like to speak. One last announcement for you guys. For those of you that were a little disappointed that there was no rock band last night, I will have rock band running from one to four this afternoon. Where? Uh, room four zero four three. I'll post it up in the Hudson room. If you want to be murdered by this gentleman, he is <laughs> using rock bands. Mr. Will Wade, ladies and gentlemen. He is using rock bands to lure you to his room. At the time. 1 and 4 p.m. Room what? 4043? 4043? 4043. Oh, they have rooms down there? <laughs> This is the sound of the steam. Irish jigging, though. Was there, that was the sound of the enormous steam pipes that run through the rooms in the fourth deck. <laughs> also, where they keep the slee stacks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> where's your call castle now, Mister? Yeah. Uh, I have been asked the way of paying for my passage on this cruise to use my professional quiz master skills for your benefit. That's right. You have with you a professional quiz master. During the next two hours, no one else is allowed to use the interrogatory case. Get that? Um, so this is what I've decided to do. We now have this stage, I will, I will address your t attention to, um, to the stage in front of you. We have two completely arbitrary teams. On this side, Ms. Lewis, Mr. Furman, Mr. Colton, Mr. Saborin. On this side, stage left, Mr. Corbett, Mr. Murphy, Mr. D. Costanzo, Mr. Wheat. I would ask you guys, as your Bloody Marys are delivered, to come up quickly with the team name. Oh, there is a god. You will also notice to the right and extreme left, or should I say, stage left, stage left, stage port and stage starboard, you will notice two additional features of our quiz show this morning. On uh, stage starboard, Mr. David Rees, our judge this morning. To each question, as we ask them, there will be an answer from each team plus a correct answer from the quiz master. Mr. Reese will judge who has the best answer of the two teams, because clearly I will have the best answer and that it is correct. But of the two teams, who has the best answer, what points they are either allowed or docked. His decisions are unappealable and final. There's one last feature to stage port. That's starboard. 
Hey, listen, motherfucker, from this perspective, it's poor. All right? I was in the theater. John T. One, one, of the great things, things, one of the great things about being a public radio host is like swearing is a superpower. You do it, and everybody's so stunned that it was possible. You can do it any you want to them for about 30 seconds. Oh my god, he said that. Anyway, over there you'll see the Hodgman. Man Hodge. Hello. Each team, I'm, I'm arbitrarily choosing this, has three Hodgmans. Meaning that they are allowed to appeal to Hodgman for help in their answer three times during the course of the quiz. So at any time when they feel stuck, it's like, call a fake trivia expert, call it what you will. He's there, he is available. Presumably, both teams can call Hodgman on the same question, in which case I don't know what you're going to do, Mr. Hodgman. I'll give them different answers. Exactly. <laughs> now, the subject of the quiz, you might expect from my um, day job that it will be current events, however, I have not been paying attention to current events because I've been on this boat. I try, shit. I'm sorry, who's got the microphone? I tried to watch some CNN while I was on the treadmill the other day, but I got really caught up in the ship channel that was showing the shopping presentation. So I can tell you a lot about Tanzanite. But no, so what we did was basically I made up some questions. Uh, about various things. We, there were three categories, and these, these will be the field of competition. Um, the last thing is, we actually have real questions for you. So individual points during this presentation, we will call upon you, the loyal audience, to answer actual questions with actual answers and give valuable prizes a number of times. So, our, our team's ready now. Do we have a, do we have a team name to, uh, to, to stage port? Uh, we are the Wesley Crusher Crushers. There you are. We are the Wesley Crusher Crusher Crushers. <laughs> I like it. All right, we ready to begin? Is the judge ready to begin? He looks ready. Is the Hodgman ready to begin? Oh, yes. All right. All right, uh, the first category is, we're on a fucking boat, Secrets of the Eurodam. First question, in its many voyages in the Seven Seas, what has never happened on the Eurodam? What has never happened on this boat? Feel free to hum. Do we have an answer? We got, we're getting a confident nod. All right. From the Wesley Crusher Crushers. Uh, there has never been a murder. <laughs> All right, murder. From the Wesley Crusher Crusher Crushers. All right, ready? Paul F. Tompkins has never been on the other end. Those two things are related in typically. <laughs> two good answers. The correct answer is no one has ever used a paper towel to open the bathroom door handle. We turn to our judge. Wesley Crusher, Crusher, Crushers. Is that you? And how many five points? points. Very good. All right. Somebody give me score here. Do we have a, I'm gonna keep score? Right. Who's keeping score? Right. Five points for these guys. Now, I remind you all that you can call on the hunt. All right. Next question. You've heard that on this cruise we have your cruise director, your captain, your travel specialist. In the days before this custom became the law of the sea, what was the appropriate title for senior ship's officers and crew? How were they addressed? I'll cut it out, would you? Answer? For the, for the, yeah. uh, before, <laughs> in the days before uh, they used that designation, they would call all officers Mr. Asshole. All right. <laughs> to my left? To my left. 
Very close. It's very close. That's very close. Um, uh, a variation of that, Mr. Shatner and Company. <laughs> no, actually, the correct answer is in the olden days, it was known as thy cruise director. <laughs> or thine. Wesley Crusher Crusher's three points. Wesley Crusher, these are the guys over here. So yeah. it's five to three, am I right? Yeah. All right. Is that a bad score? Is that fine? Fair? That's a good score. You did well. It's totally up to you, David. Yeah, yeah. Really that's a great there score. There is no higher authority. I love how surprised you got it, too. You're like, these guys? These guys? <laughs> you know, that's fine. One more time. So we have, we have your cruise director, we have your travel consultant, your shopping expert. Uh, and when the ship was launched back in 2008, it had an additional officer whose services the captain decided were not necessary to the functioning of the ship. What was that uh, officer? <laughs> no, once on the... <laughs> what I want you guys to hum... I'm a, from now on, Rick Knight for humming. And I believe his request is no humming. The Wesley, the Wesley Crusher Crusher Crushers. Uh, weight loss coordinator. <laughs> Your weight loss coordinator. Uh, it was the Gruelier. <laughs> <laughs> we withdraw our answer. All right. The correct answer: Your lifespan actuary. <laughs> Mr. So Reeves. Did uh, Wesley Crusher Crusher Crushers just bail on this? Thing? I think they did. I think they conceded. All right. When a team conceded, the other team gets three points. So now it's six to five. Yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> I was an English major, honestly. I have no idea. All right. Here we go. So far, we have seen five accepted folded towel shapes. <laughs> These things have been observed in the wild. The elephant, the swans, the swans kissing, the seal, the lethal sea scorpion, and the conjoined male-female genitals. <laughs> what, is, what is the secret shape indicating that the cabin crew has marked you for death? <laughs> the, the, I got this one last night, actually. <laughs> the towel gammy equivalent of the black hand on the door. The Wesley Crusher Crusher Crushers wish to consult the Hodgman. You may. All right, we're calling on the Hodgman. Mr. Uh, Hodgman. The Hodgman be, in fact, responsible for the creation of all the towel things while we sleep. <laughs> well, I thought I was, but there is apparently uh, a shadow towel sculptor who is trying to gaslight me. <laughs> because yesterday afternoon, and some of you may have had the same experience, I went into my room in the afternoon after they had been in there, and it did not occur to me to, I didn't see a towel sculpture on the bed. I think you know what I'm talking about. And I was like, oh, they must have, oh, my fuck was that? After collecting my feces from the floor, he does that. I realized, he collects them and makes them and puts them in boxes. I realized that it was not a hanged baby. <laughs> or one of those creatures from Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. You'll, thank you. Uh, but a towel shaped monkey leering at me. And even once I determined that it was a towel shaped monkey leering at me, I still was not convinced that this does not mean that someone wanted to kill me. <laughs> like, even though it was not a hanged baby, that was a very, very creepy, horrible thing to put in my room. <laughs> and I hold one of you responsible for it. <laughs> so while I am normally a fake trivia expert here, I must deploy actual trivia, because that thing, uh, that thing defies logic and as to why anyone would think that would be charming to put in my room. <laughs> So the, the hanging, the answer that you guys have received is the hanging. The, mon the monkey hanging, hanging from its towel, from the uh, from the coat hanger. Right. Or no, rather, its paws trapped in the jaws of the pants <laughs> and left to die in your room. That is the 
that is the, 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 the crucified monkey. The crucified. I believe I believe that is known as bush linen. My wife and I were so terrified by this monkey creature uh, in our room that we uh, just abandoned the rules of yeah. the ship and killed it with fire. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, so I think it's only been hanging one hanging, angry, hanging to, 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 to my to my starter. Uh, we're gonna go with full-sized towel python with a washcloth baby inside. <laughs> so it's all the way around. Actually, both interesting answers, but the correct answer to the question, what a towel sculpture indicates that you've been marked for death by your camera crew, is a towel in the shape of a towel simply thrown on the floor. <laughs> Wait, I've had that! <laughs> Enjoy that Bloody Mary, my friend. It may be your last. Mr. Reese, your judgment. Um, you, that, you. <laughs> Five points. All right, thank you. Like I said, his new judging power is on. So. Peter is now scoring points? Uh, apparently. Yeah. All right. Game on. <laughs> I wouldn't question the judge if he seemed to be, uh, to have all of his faculties, but he doesn't, uh... I do, don't worry. I believe it. <laughs> Shipboard justice is an arbitrary and drunken thing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I uh, believe he may have lost. I address myself to the booth. Uh, could we please have that image projected onto the onto the screen? It's called simply asking for this. Is, oh, so oh, here he goes. I see him up there. Okay. Now this is, an, if you can see it, this is an actual painting that is on display and thus for sale in the ship's art gallery. And according to David. Your art director. Uh, that is called Old California, and it is by some artist or other who, according to your art director, David, is often collected by Hollywood celebrities. Its minimum bid is one hundred thousand dollars. My question: two hundred thousand. There you are. By the way, I've had some conversations with your art director, David, and he's very disappointed in your art collecting. I just want you to know. I've, I've talked to him a couple times, and he's gotten increasingly bitter on this trip. And he says, people on this boat, they just don't know about art. Anyway, this is a uh, masterpiece of the collection, in my view. And I'm asking the team to explain, please, as an act of art interpretation, what is the meaning of the ghostly female figure seen to the, uh, I guess it would be the port side of the tank. Audience hum still alive by Jonathan Colton while they <laughs> deliberate. <laughs> our, uh, you're ready. Our team uh, has right, yeah. stormed to uh, offer an explanation. Yeah. Uh, it's actually a trick question. We're going to call you on that. Uh, it's true that this artist appeals to Hollywood folks and musicians as well. This one is in fact not a painting, but a spectral leftover. And it was from when Bruce Springsteen was on the ship, and he was shopping for a painting. And the spirit of Tom Jones' wife actually left his body and left itself imprinted on a tarkai. <laughs> I'm sorry, I stopped listening about halfway through that. But all right, supposedly somebody heard that. Do you guys have an answer to the meaning of the... Yeah, this is obvious. Uh, <clears throat> this is a representation of uh, Paul F. Tompkins' murder, which has <laughs> happened while we've been at sea. The woman represents Paul F. Tompkins. <laughs> uh, because the room represents murder. Her... Uh, mustache. Tompkins -sicity? She's very Tompkins y, I think. If you put a mustache on her, I think she would look like Paul Tompkins. Obviously, the towel, I was getting to that. Obviously, the towel indicates that uh, he slash she has been marked for death. Her ghostliness indicates that she has been murdered. The wine indicates that she once enjoyed wine when she was a living person <laughs> named Paul Tompkins. All right. Those are very interesting, but the correct answer is. What ghostly female figure? <laughs> Mr. Reeves, your judgment. Sagal is killing you guys. 
you guys need to step up your game. I gotta go with Wesley Crusher Crushers. Two points. It's uh, eight to five. Uh, so the Crusher yeah. Crusher Crushers are going All right. Uh, we have now finished with that category, so it's time to move on. Can I ask a quick question about the art? In the, yeah. Is that all right? You may. Um, does anyone else have the painting that I have in my room, which is, um, and I don't know if the paintings repeat throughout the boat, but um, in my room is a painting of Marilyn Monroe. Sitting on a stoop? Well, she's sitting at the edge of the La Brea Tar Pits, and there's like three old-timey Hollywood celebrities like covered in tar, uh, like an old man with two women on his knees, and they're smiling. But it looks like they're covered in oil. And uh, Marilyn Monroe is like looking at them like feeling really sad and left out. Does anybody else have that painting? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's not a painting. That's actually a photograph. <laughs> that's what they used to do before there was That's how they hung out. Yeah, you preserved and, your celebrity. And there are actually historical reenactors who gather at the La Brea Tar Pits on alternate Thursdays to actually recreate that in a daguerreotype. But who are the people? Who are the people covered in tar? Who are dinosaurs? The? Duh. No, there's one who was wearing glasses, man. Dinosaurs don't wear glasses. It was very much in vogue back when the La Brea targets were open for swimming. <laughs> to take the healing towers, isn't right. that what they said? Right. For for people to go there and, and swim, and it, but then it became, it became a big thing among Hollywood celebrities to do it, and those were very famous uh, movie actors of their time. Um, but you, I, I, I know their names, but I'm not going to say because you won't remember them because uh, they died the next day <laughs> because their lungs were full of tar. <laughs> and so Marilyn Monroe was very left out, I felt very bad and left out, but she, uh, she lived to perform for another 15 days. So, <laughs> what's interesting is I, I, I have a painting, a completely different painting. It's like of an Italian streetscape, and Marilyn Monroe appears in it, staring at the viewer as well. I guess what's interesting is that when this ship left Fort Lauderdale, Marilyn Monroe appeared in none of the painting. <laughs> and now you must each show your Marilyn Monroe painting to somebody else within the next seven days. <laughs> Otherwise. All right, uh, we have finished with that category, so it's time for actual trivia. This is, there's an actual answer to this qu trivia question. And whoever answers it in this audience will win a valuable prize. An actual prize for actual people. So here's the question. Many of you know that Mr. Colvin, to my starter, uh, in his senior year at Yale, uh, was a member of the famed a cappella singing group, the Whiffen Poots, which is very exclusive. You have to be invited to join it. Uh, it's all male, and you have to kill a guy to get in, to make your bones, what they call it, in a cappella singing circles. But the question is, what was the name of the group that he was in prior to the Whiffle Boots? Is there somebody right here standing up? Uh, she was first, she was obvious, made the right oh, yes, the name, please. The Spizwinks, exactly correct. Mr. Colvin, what was the speed win? Not, not exactly correct. Not exactly correct, says Mr. Hodgman. Mr. Hodgman? There is a punctuation mark. It's an exclamation point. Not question exactly mark. correct. <laughs> a question mark and two parentheses. It's a question mark and two parentheses. Are you, you are you're calling his roommate, are you not? Yes. Right, so I'm going to consider that a collaborative <laughs> effort because I, I, can't stay, I can't stand for Colleen to lose. So now we have to put your prize. Sorry. The answer. The answer is uh, a parenthetical question mark, such that it is officially pronounced the Spizwings. <laughs> What's the difference between pronouncing a question mark and a parenthetical question mark? I mean, is it like the difference between the Spizwings and the Spizwings? Just, just a little yeah, quiet. Just quiet. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, the answer is the Spizwings. Why are the Spizwings called the Spizwings? Uh, the Spizwings were formed as a, uh, a sort of sardonical response to the Whiffenpoofs. The Whiffenpoofs were formed first, uh, and a bunch of other undergraduates thought, oh, well, those Whiffenpoofs think they're so fancy and clever and on the cutting edge of a cappella singing. I don't know. It was old days. I don't understand. This was during the dark days of the a cappella wars. That's right. The a cappella so that's another group formed to sort of be the, uh, the to sort of take the take the piss out of the, the whiff and poops, right. if you will. And uh, they thought it would be, I, I don't know, the question mark indicates it being sort of, you're, you're unsettled by yeah. them, or you're, the, the a cappella drives you crazy? I don't know exactly what, 
In those days, putting a question mark at the end of something was a, was a very modern and dangerous idea, I think. <laughs> the yes, the statistics were kind of the orphans to the Wittenhoof's warriors. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a much better way of putting it. Thank you, John. And uh, I remember that the Street Wings Take the Piss Out of the Wittenhoof's was the name of a very popular gay porn film at the time. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, our next Some meeting. Friends. Thank How you exactly so much. You know that. All right. Congratulations. Is, is this Colleen? Is this Colleen? Yes. Hello, Colleen. Colleen is the winner of a fifty dollars gift certificate from ThinkGeek. Thank you. Thank you. Applause for the parents. Although looking around this crowd, a gift certificate any amount for ThinkGeek is redundant. You are wearing their entire inventory, are you not? <laughs> no, she's wearing the greatest T-shirt in the history of T-shirts. What is that T-shirt? Something coincidentally designed by a guy on this stage. <laughs> I, I, I cannot see it because of the lighting. Did you describe it? Yeah, it is right. several 20-sided die rotating in sort of a comic formation. Several 20-sided oh, die. Oh, several 20-sided die. It's a yeah. dice atom. Dice atom. It's, it's, it's a dice atom, which I wished to call critical mass, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it would be called how we roll. And by think geek, I mean woot. Yes. And by woot, I mean more Bloody Marys for Will. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you so much for your participation. We'll come back to more trivia in a moment, but now we're back to the second category for our players on stage. Category number two is called Joko Crazy. <laughs> you see how cutting edge it sounds with a question mark at the end? Things you, things you, yes. No, no, this is, this is, this is not parenthetical. This is a bold, unparenthesized question mark. Asterisk. Things you might not have known about our host, musician, and troubadour, Jonathan Colton. And Jonathan, you are allowed to answer these questions. <laughs> I should hope so. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan has said, and I got this from a friend of Jonathan who I will not name. Jonathan has said he will shave his beard on the, under one and only one circumstance. What is that circumstance in which he will shave his beard? <laughs> we would like to appeal to the Hodgman. The Hodgman. Hodgman's man, the Hodgman's. Hodgman. Yes. One Hodgman. This is your first Hodgman. You each have two more, but go on. Who, who is appealing to the Hodgman? Uh, the, uh, the Wesley Crusher Crusher Crushers. To my right. No, no, no. Uh, no wait. The Wesley Crusher Crushers. How dare you! <laughs> I encouraged Jonathan to shave his beard for this cruise so that he might be able to enjoy a certain amount of anonymity <laughs> and not be bothered too much by you people. No, I encouraged Jonathan to shave a little bit of his beard every day until it was all gone. So it would, have a, it would be a beard of day. And he said that he, he did not want to do that because he was saving the shaving of his beard uh, for, I think it was a rock music video, that someday you might want to make a rock music video. And I said that seemed a little less than exciting. And then he said, well, I will shave my beard the moment you, John Hodgman, can grow a beard. Which is to say, never. <laughs> but I'm now taking uh, lots of uh, new medications. <laughs> and you can see I've had some surgery to augment my beard growing, and I have a poultice underneath this, and I think by the end of the day I should have a gigantic beard. <laughs> and my original scheme will be fulfilled. I've been in the spa all morning. All right, so is that your, do we have an answer here? No. No? <laughs> You can put forward my answer or one of your own. Yeah, you can. You can. You can choose. I think. Well, I think we'll go with that one. Music video for Sunday. Well, I believe the answer, if I could mind that, was for a music video for a rock music. No, video. when when Hodgman grows one. When on the circumstances in which you will grow, you have shaved your when Hodgman grows one. Sort of the beard transfer, handing off of the patient. There's only a finite number of beards in the universe. Exactly. <laughs> beards are never created or destroyed. Just They're simply. I know. No, it's a different form. So Wesley Crusher Crusher's final answer is, is when Hodgman grows one. Jonathan will shave his beard when John can grow a beard. All right, I, I turn to the Wesley Crusher Crusher Crusher's. I believe Mr. Wheaton has this one. This is a deviously fiendish question, Sable. <laughs> <laughs> for we all know that Colton's beard cannot be shaved. For Colton's beard is the host organism from whence Colton draws its power. The beard is Colton. And Colton is the beard. 
the parent can be shaved as as quickly as as the Colton could be uh, launched into space by its own Achilles tendon compression and release. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I withdraw my answer, by the way. All right. The correct answer is, what ghostly beard? <laughs> he has a beard. The correct answer is that Colton attempts to shave the beard daily. But the beard cannot be shaved. The beard pulls the razor out of his hand. <laughs> the beard starts screaming. Like, he, he picks the razor beard and goes, ah! When, uh, the beard Bill, are you saying that the, the, the beard is the brain? And yeah. And Colton merely... Provides the meat parasite that, that provides it. Well, guys, I am right here. I am sitting right here. <laughs> no, wait, this is my Shut this up, beer! <laughs> no, that was this. This is what I'm saying. That, that, that the Colton provides mirror ambulation for the beer. He's, he's the means of transport for the sentient beer. For the sentient yes. beer. It's like, one of those, it's like one of those bugs that causes the insect to climb up. The, the grass and stand there waiting to be eaten and controls the spirit. So in other words, that's why you may wonder why Jonathan quit his lucrative career as a computer programmer and became an internet musician. That's when he grew the beard. beard. And if anyone the doubts beard. the nefarious power of Colton's beard, ask yourself this. How many of us in this room, upon learning we would be joining the beard